It really like captures the spirit of what you were, what you were doing in the in the seventies, and a lot of what you did in the seventies in with it ain't me, babe, and women's comics, and you doing things that were really expressing the kinds of stories that you wanted to do that were different than what the male underground cartoonists wanted to do or what the mainstream quote unquote mainstream publishers wanted to do. Really opened the doors and opened people's oh, eyes yeah. to what the comic book medium could do again. And I can trace a direct line through the stuff from the 60s and 70s into the independent boom of the 80s and 90s. Oh, yeah. And the people who grew up reading that stuff then went on to open the doors at book publishers and to start making movies based on comics. And there's now, like, the generation that's coming out, starting out now making comics is starting from a level of... Oh, sophistication yeah. with the art, with the form that like and they're so good. Hard, hard they're for me. so good. The art is incredible. And what is really and you both with... helped lay the groundwork. For oh, I know. I accept that honor. And so <laughs> do you, really. Um, what is so important is that you look at the comics that women are doing, and there's a million different styles. It used to be that if you wanted to draw comics, there were two styles. One was the Marvel superhero style. One was the DC superhero style. And neither of those styles are what women want to draw. We don't really mm. want to draw guys with big chins punching each other out. This is simply not our interest. But you look at the comics now, and there's every style imaginable. Yeah, I really think we're in the middle of a renaissance um, in, the, in the art form itself. And you were saying how much people know we owe so much of that to Trina, to Trina Robbins. You didn't speak that out. There were three editions of the Dennis Kitchen book where she just really told the history of women in comics, I think it was. But um, Definitely. And we has have to just tell been instrumental in spreading knowledge. Yeah, and that's crucial because if, you, if, if people like you and us don't reclaim that history and share it with other people, it's gone. then it's gone, it's lost. It becomes much, much harder to recover, uh, you know, 100 years later. And these women were lost. The women I write about were lost. Nobody knew about them. Now, every, not everyone, but, you know, people know who Nell Brinkley was. People know who Lily Renee was, who Tarpey Mills was, you know, and they were so good. They were so good, but they weren't, they didn't have big chins and thick necks and punch each other out, so the guys were interested. <laughs> I think we have enough time for questions. Is it, did anybody have questions they want to ask? Uh, yes, you, you first and then the front row. Okay. Um, did you ever know any of the, of the 60s and 70s underground of Bob Crumb and Spain? Of course. And we more both importantly, know. did you ever talk to their wives or girlfriends and think, you know? <laughs> Well, his first wife, Dana, um, and he treated her very badly, but she was, she was his apologist. I mean, um, Fritz the Cat, which was one of his early 